Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and today I would like to show you multiprocessing in Python. So this is going to be a very basic introduction to the concept of multiprocessing and how to apply this uh, to the Python programming language. Now, first things first, what is multiprocessing? You can think of it as starting your Python script multiple times. Uh, it is not very different from that, but Python has a built-in library, the multiprocessing library, that makes this easier for you to do so that you don't literally have to start your Python script multiple times. But it is, uh, from a technical perspective, quite similar. Now, each process is independent from the other processes. That makes This means, for example, that they don't share memory. This means that they cannot easily share variables with each other. And that means that communication between the different processes is a little bit of tricky. Now, the multiprocessing library uh, takes some of this, uh, uh, offers some routines that make this easier, communication between processes, but it's generally still quite tricky. Now, each process runs in parallel with the other processes, and if you have multiple cores, for example, nowadays even most uh, laptops have multiple cores, right? Then you can run each process on a different core, on a different processor, and that's where the potential for performance gain uh, comes in. Because normally a Python process runs on a single core. So if you have a laptop with eight cores and you start eight processes on these different cores, then potentially your program will, will run eight times as fast because it makes use of those multiple cores. Now, and there are many reasons for using multiprocessing. Here I will focus on, the, on making your code run faster, optimization or performance gain. Um, and in that context, I think it's important to say that multiprocessing is not a real optimization technique. There are real optimization techniques, and I have a video profiling and optimizing your Python code. And often you will find that your code, if it runs a little bit slow, that there are some bits of it that actually are take 99% of the time. And then if you opt optimize, uh, optimize those little bits of your code, your code suddenly runs, say, a thousand times faster. Right? That depends, of course, on the specifics of your code. But normally, real profiling and optimization can really massively speed up your code. Multiprocessing can also speed up your code by running on multiple processes. But of course, that's limited to the number of cores that you have in your computer. So if you have a laptop with eight cores, then at most, you will get an eightfold performance increase. And in practice, you will generally get much less because processes also generally do something that you cannot really do in parallel. For example, writing and reading from the disk, right? So the performance gain that you can get with multiprocessing is let's say as a ballpark figure, less than a tenfold. And it depends very much on the specifics of what you are doing with multiprocessing and how many processors are available on your system. Now, a very important concept uh, when it comes to multiprocessing is referential transparency. And that is a, uh, a, a property of a function. Now, function is referentially transparent when it is essentially independent from the rest of your code. So meaning that you give, the function takes an argument that tells the function what to do. And then when the function is done, it returns a value. But other than receiving that argument and returning the value, the function should be independent from your program. This means specifically that it should, for example, not use uh, global variables. If, a, if a, your function relies on global variables, it is not referentially transparent. Or transparent. And a lot of good, well-designed code is actually referentially transparent, I should say. So it's not such a, not such a weird uh, thing, um, but it's important to be aware of it. Now, and when a function is referentially transparent, then it's very easy to use it in a multiprocessing setting because it means that you can essentially fork it off to a different project process, give it some arguments. Then when the, when the, when the function is done, it returns the return value back to the main process. And that's all there is to it. And you don't need any kind of complicated, uh, complicated communication protocol. And that is the easiest case of multiprocessing. And that's what I will show actually in this video. Multiprocessing carries a little bit of overhead with it because each time that you start a new process, that just takes a little bit of time. Now, so if you are, if you are in it for the performance gains, this means that you should use multiprocessing for jobs that actually run for a little while. So functions that take a little while to complete, say several seconds. Because if you're forking off 
a function into a different process and then the, and then the function is done within a millisecond, then the overhead will actually be more than the performance gain that you get from j dividing the jobs over multiple processes. But if you have a function that takes, say, 30 seconds to complete, then, of course, the overhead is, relatively speaking, negligible, and then you can get really big performance gains. So perfect, personally, I, I, I tend to use multiprocessing for functions that take, say, 30 seconds or something or more to complete, because that's where the real, the real potential for performance gain is. Now, multiprocessing can be very complicated, especially because there are different, because of the difficulty of communicating between the different processes. But in the simple case, when you, of having a referentially transparent function that you just want to call and then get a return value, um, then Python offers the multiprocessing of pool object, which is very convenient. And actually, this, it is a specific case of multiprocessing, but it is a case that covers a lot of real life scenarios. So that's what I will show to you. Essentially using multiprocessing to run one function on multiple processes, on multiple processors at the same time. Okay. Now, so now do you know a little bit, a little bit of background? So let's take a look at the actual, at the code. Okay, so here we have an IPython, uh, sorry, JupyterLab notebook, more previously called IPython notebooks. Um, if you're not familiar with this, it is essentially a Python interpreter mixed with some uh, markdown uh, text, right? So, but it is, this is just normal Python code. And what we're going to do is we have a function here, the factorial function. And a factorial is a mathematical operation often uh, indicated with an exclamation mark after a number. And here you see it by example. I always find it easier to explain by example. Factorial 3 is 3 times 2 times 1 equals 6. Right? Factorial 4 would be 4 times 3 times 1 uh, times 2 times 1, etc. So that's the operation. Uh, why is it a good example? Well, because it is actually something that for large numbers takes quite a while to cal calculate. Um, so it is the type of function that you could use multiprocessing for. And it is also referentially transparent because here you see the factorial function gets an, a number n and it returns the factorial of that number f. And other than that, the function does not communicate with the program at all. It is completely independent and referentially transparent and therefore it is perfect for multiprocessing. And a lot of functions that you will work with, especially if you do data analysis type of things, have these properties. And here we have a, a, a tuple of four numbers. 50,000 to 50,003. And that's what we're going to calculate the factorial of. Um, and here I import the time module because we want to do a bit of timing to make, to show how long everything takes. Now, uh, so let's load it, load this in up. And then first I will show how this works just with the for loop in a single process, right? So we're going to call the factorial function four times just with the regular for loop. This is not beautiful, but this is also not, not unreasonable. So I start with an empty list result, and then I say for n in numbers, I say result dot append factorial n. Okay. Oh. Now, um, right. So you get we walk through all the numbers. We call for every number the factorial, and we append the result to uh, the, we append the result to the result list. Now I also want to know how long this takes because that's what's important here. So I'm going to say first at t zero times. Oh. And then once we're done, up t1 times time. All right, and then we're going to print out the how long this actually took. So we say uh, uh, execution took up uh, uh, oh, oh, dot format t1 minus t0. So this is Python string formatting, right? Here I'm saying here I want to have a floating point number, so a number with decimals, up to the fourth decimal. And what is, am I going to put in there? Well, the difference between T1 and T0. So I'm going to time how long it took. All right, let's execute this. All right, so we see some output and we see that the execution took 2.6 seconds. And you see that it's very, I put some print statements in the factorial function to see the flow, right? So you see when it starts, it prints a start. When it's done, it prints a done. And you see it starts, done, starts, done, starts, done, right? So it's very serial. And in the end, it takes, ends up taking 2.6 seconds. Nothing, nothing special, right? This is just normal sequential uh, single process code. Now I'm going to take this and change it a little bit using the map function, um, which essentially does the same thing as this for loop, but it re already resembles in terms of structure how the multiprocessing uh, module works. And so it's a good intermediate step to it to demonstrate the result. So how does that work? Well, the map function, I say result is map. 
The map function takes two arguments. The first argument that it takes is the function that we want to apply. What is that in our case? It is the factorial function. Then it, take, it takes a list or some kind of iterable, in our case a tuple, of the arguments that we want to pass to the function. In our case, that's numbers. Right? Numbers is a tuple with four numbers in it. And we want to get, call the factorial function for each number in the numbers. Um, now, that's what map does. right? So you see it looks a little bit different from the for loop here, but it's, it does essentially the same thing. One thing map actually doesn't start working until you start using the output of map. So if I execute this, you will see it go really, well, goes really fast, 0.001. Why do we, are we suddenly magically doing, doing things much faster? No, it is simply because map doesn't actually call the factorial function until we start using, uh, using the contents of the, of the result. And one way in which we can force that is by forcing the result of map into a list then map will actually start calling factorial and feed the result into the list one item at a time. So we will get a list, right? So that's the logic of wrapping the map function in a list to force the map for, uh, to actually execute. It's a bit strange actually. Um, and it's also only applicable in Python 3. Now, okay, here we go. Now you see the map does exactly what our for loop did before. It calls the factorial function sequentially. And in the end, it takes 2.7 seconds, 2.6 seconds. Okay, does the same thing. But now we have a structure that we can very easily uh, turn into a multiprocessing situation. So I copy this. Then what I'm going to do is first of all, first things first, I'm going to import multiprocessing. Import multiprocessing as MP. I think multiprocessing is a bit long, so you can import it as an alias MP. And that's quite common, right? Some, some of these Python libraries have these standard abbreviations, like NumPy is often imported as NP, with an N of, uh, of Nico, and this is MP uh, for multiprocessing. Now, and then we need to, uh, we want to use multiprocessing to call, some to do something mappy. How does that work? Well, it works like this. With MP, multiprocessing, dot pool, um, as pool. What do we do here? Well, we create a pool object. And the pool object is a pool of processes. So it is an object that maintains multiple processes. And it has a map function in it. And that is really, really cool. So what we can do is we can essentially leave everything as it was. And then we say pool dot map up. And there we go. So what we're doing now is rather than using the built-in map function of Python, we're using the map function that is part of the pool object. It works exactly the same way. It will call the factorial function for each number in numbers. The only and very important difference is that it will do that in different processors, processes divided across different processors on your computer. So let's see what happens if we execute this up. So you see it starts the factorial four times and then it is done. And then the execution took 1.7 seconds, shorter than this. You also see that it is shorter, but it is not four times shorter because there is a bit of overhead and not everything is truly done in parallel, but it is nevertheless considerably shorter. Um, the pool function, the pool object has a few arguments. You can also say processes is, for example, two. Then you say, I want to have only two processes running at the same time. By default, the pr it will run as many processes as you have cores in your laptop, but say that you don't really want to... Uh, you know, go overboard in the terms of uh, compute, computational uh, power, then you can limit it and you can say, for example, two, right? And it will run only two processes at the same time. So start, start, done, start, done. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All right, and it again takes about 1.7. Now, as I said, but let's put it back to four. As I said, um, multiprocessing is especially effective if you have functions that take a little while to complete. So here in this case, the factorial function for these numbers takes quite a while to complete. And therefore we have some performance gain, even though it's a little bit modest, um, for when, when using multiprocessing. But let's say what happens, see what happens if we actually don't reduce the numbers. So we use only 500, 501, uh, 502 and 503. Up. These are small numbers and it is very easy to calculate uh, the, the, the factorial for them. Now, if we run that in a single process with the for loop, well, it takes two milliseconds. Easy. If we run it with map, it takes 
three milliseconds, right? A little bit of variability, but it takes doesn't take a lot of time. Now, if we're going to run it with multiprocessing.pool, it will also go fast, don't worry, but still it will be considerably slower. Now it takes uh, almost 100 milliseconds. So here you see that the overhead now starts to weigh in more heavily than the performance gain that we get from dividing uh, the job over multiple processes, right? So only use, only use the, the multiprocessing when you have, when you know that your function call factorial in this case is actually going to run for say a few seconds, because then it makes a lot of sense to, uh, to use multiprocessing. Now, I hope that you now have some idea of how multiprocessing works and how you can apply it in Python. It is really easy. Uh, I use it all the time for these kinds of situations. Um, and it, it gets you a modest, but very useful and notable performance gain. So with that, thank you very much for your attention.